Was he poisoned by Putin? Just look at this. On the left, Putin foe Mikhail Saakashvili one year ago. On the right, Saakashvili today. His lawyers arguing in court today that the former president of the country of Georgia, a longtime Putin adversary, was poisoned. They say that tests show heavy metals in his body, and they say Putin is behind it. And you are going to hear the details in just a moment. Because today, Saakashvili looked extremely frail. He attended this court hearing remotely. It was his first public appearance in months after he was imprisoned for corruption upon return to Georgia from the United States. Saakashvili's appearance, coming just after the Ukrainian President Zelensky publicly called on the Georgian government to release Saakashvili. Now, Mikhail Saakashvili is a man I've known for years. He's appeared on this show multiple times. He was a loud champion for Georgia on the world stage. He fought against Putin when Putin invaded Georgia. And here is what else Saakashvili says is now happening to him in prison. Do you recall specifically the time that you were beaten when they removed your watch? Uh, that, at that time, I was, they were choking me and just strangling me and, uh, and beating my head so like this, something like that. And were they stepping on your neck? They were, they were stepping uh, on my neck. It's all video, so they deleted the video that would show it better. Nick Payton Walsh is out front to begin our coverage with more on Mikhail Saakashvili's story. This is what's become of one of the most influential men in the post-Soviet world, Mikhail Saakashvili, allegedly throwing things at an unidentified figure in a clinic in his native Georgia. He's in prison there on charges he says are trumped up. The authorities released these pictures to show what they call his, quote, abuse and aggressive behaviour. The trailblazing former president has been on and off hunger strike, demanding better medical care. Gruzi. This week, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, appealed to Georgia to give him just that. Mikhail Saakashvili. Please make a decision that can save his life, the president said. Transfer Mikhail Saakashvili to one of the clinics in Ukraine, another European country, America. The new thorn in Putin's side, standing up for the first the young American trained lawyer led street protests to unseat Georgia's long serving president, former Soviet Eduard Shevardnadze, back in 2003. The so called Rose Revolution was a shot of freedom in the region's arm, where similar protests would follow. They will stay here overnight and for as long as it's, possible, as it's necessary to stop mass scale uh, fraud and rigging of these elections. He was the face of liberty, fluent in many languages and caused panic in the Kremlin. The darling of US neocons, Saakashvili soon found himself at war with Russia in 2008, a brief conflict in which Putin said he would hang him by his balls. He didn't, and Georgia and its president survived. But by 2013, Saakashvili left office unpopular and protested against, despite the widespread reform he had imposed on Georgia. He got a second lease of life when he left for Ukraine, but it was sweet, then suddenly sour. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko in 2015 gave him Ukrainian citizenship so he could govern the region around Odessa. But they quickly fell out when Saakashvili accused Poroshenko of corruption. Then began an ugly series of scenes, arrests, protests, leading to Saakashvili's return to Georgia to face trial for abuse of power and hospitalization after hunger strikes. His rise and fall, a parable of Russia's continued grip over its empire. Nick Payton Walsh, CNN, London. And that, of course, was Nick Payton Walsh with that reporting. Now I want to bring in Massimo D'Angelo, one of Mikhail Saakashvili's lawyers, and Edward Saakashvili, his son. Edward, I want to start with you and show the side-by-side -side of your father again. Just one year ago, right after he was arrested, uh, compared to how he looks today, uh, frail and weak. And uh, these pictures are stark for anyone but for you. Edward, how hard is it for you to see your father like this? Uh, I mean, it's it's really awful. Um, um, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, it's really awful. And um, I think, I mean, what's different for me is that 
I've actually had a chance to see him. You know, he was hidden for the public for months, uh, but I've had a chance to visit him in prison uh, over time. And like the, the painful part there has just been watching him uh, slowly decline and then more quickly uh, in the last few months. And in a way, as shocking as these images now are, and like the world is seeing how, how off this health is, uh, the upside is that at least now it's undeniable, you know, because the government's been making insinuations that it's all fake, et cetera. Uh, but when you see when you see this footage, it's 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 completely obvious um, how far he's declined. So that is kind of one benefit, at least as shocking as it is that that now there's going to be hopefully more pressure and more, you know, outrage at, at, at what's happened. Massimo, a moment ago, I played the audio clip that you had shared with us about Mikhail. He was detailing one instance of uh, alleged abuse because of a watch he was wearing, is what he says this was about. He told you that he was assaulted when he was transferred from the prison to the hospital as well. And I wanted to play part of that exchange. Here it is. I was dragged, kicked, uh, beaten. You were beaten? Yeah, for sure. When were you beaten? When they took, uh, forcibly took me out of the car because under Georgia law, they, uh, a procedure, there is no right to take someone to a hospital if there is no written consent. So allegations of abuse, physical assault, suspected poisoning, rapid de rapidly deteriorating health, as Edward is talking about. Just to be clear, Massimo, you believe that Putin is behind this, right? Yes, absolutely. And... People forget, but in 2008, Putin did exactly what he's doing now in Ukraine to Georgia. Under color of darkness, he invaded Georgia. And just like President Zelensky is doing today in Ukraine, Saakashvili stood up and fought back. And because of this, uh, the Kremlin, and Putin specifically, uh, became his arch nemesis, uh, number one enemy. Uh, and because of everything that Saakashvili did in westernizing the country uh, was adverse to what Putin wanted and the Kremlin wanted. And Saakashvili tried to announce to the world, and he foreshadowed everything that Putin mm -hmm. is doing today to bring the Soviet Republic back and to annex the uh, territories that were previously part of the Soviet Republic. So, so Edward, you know, as, as, as Massimo is talking about, your father, obviously, was the president of Georgia when Putin invaded it in 2008. He knows Putin. And even after he left office, he spoke out whenever he could to warn other countries about Putin. Uh, he was very vocal about it. Uh, here's some of what he told me. This is in 2017. I mean, he, he raised his voice. He said this. This is the Putin you know. He likes people who can, he can really manipulate so could and intimidate. Play him. You know, like, yeah, and the thing, the only yeah. thing that America cannot afford to show the Russians mm -hmm. that America is weak, because the only thing Putin appreciates, everybody knows that, is yes. sheer force. Edward, your father believed Putin was a threat to the world. He took great risks to expose that. He returned to Georgia at risk of being imprisoned to make that, uh, to stand up for that. Does he have any regrets now about speaking out or about returning? Um... I wouldn't say he has regrets about speaking out. I think he you know, very much continues to stand uh, for what he's always stood for. Uh, but as for the return, I think, you know, I mean, I don't want to speak for him. I would say that given what has happened, you know, that 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 was a misstep um, because, you know, obviously the the writing was on the wall about, about how the Georgian authorities are going to react. Obviously, it's been way worse than any of us were expecting you know it's one thing to put somebody in prison and you know that that's that's terrible for for the family and, and everything but but to put somebody in this state after just a year of imprisonment where they I mean, quite obviously and literally are kind of on the verge of you know fighting for their life that's that was unexpected um so um yeah so i mean i would definitely regret going back knowing that that's what would happen. But of course, at the time, it was difficult to tell. Right. And Massimo, when you talk about these heavy metals that have been, you know, tested for in his body, do you know anything about these and, and why they lead you to think about poisoning and, and, and Putin, which, of course, uh, you know, has been associated and accused of poisonings in the past? We know that that's sort of a time, uh, you know, a, a fingerprint of Russia's tactics. Sure. Um, we, we, we certainly know that that's uh, how they operate. 
Um, and what we did is we composed a team of five independent medical experts, some of the top medical experts in the world, uh, Nobel Peace Prize winners, Congressional Medal of Honor winners, and uh, a, a well-known toxicologist. And while I was in Georgia uh, getting the tapes that we listened to earlier, uh, my neurologist was there with me, and we took samples, hair and nail samples from Saakashvili, as well as a biopsy of some of his fat tissue uh, in his stomach area. And we sent it back to a lab in the United States for testing. And uh, those tests, along uh, with some of the blood testing results that we that we received revealed heavy metals, uh, arsenic, mercury, among others. Uh, so that uh, is what told us that he was being poisoned.